Hey everybody, welcome to Technical. Today's episode, entitled Same Shirt as Last Time Edition, we are going to be talking about SLI and crossfire potential on the secondary market. So basically, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at some very popular graphics cards of the past, examine them piece by piece for viability in multi-GPU configurations, see what it's going to cost you, what the alternatives might cost, and whether or not it's a good idea altogether. We're going to be covering the whole spectrum in the span of 10 minutes or so, so stay tuned. <laughs> It's impossible to cover every single graphics card ever made and make a whole list of SLI Crossfire compatibility across all of history because that's a lot of shit to cover. So what we're going to have to do to start off this video is narrow shit down and weed stuff out. And I have the perfect solution. Today, here in my brand new studio, I have a live audience. All PC Master Racists. PC Master Racers. I still haven't figured that one out. All of them are members of the PC Master Race and they all have different graphics cards and they're here today to ask me questions about SLI and Crossfire. And that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. So let's take it to the audience. Okay, so what graphics cards are you guys running? Give me an idea. Let's start with uh, you, Rob, there. Rob with the hot wife. Yeah, how about you? Uh, yeah, I have a, a GTX uh, 680, two gigabyte, and I was wondering if you thought that was worthwhile pursuing. Well, Rob and his hot wife ask a very interesting question. When you've got a card like the GTX 680 or the 770, the smaller two gigabyte version, there obviously rise a lot of problems with SLI potential thanks to that small VRAM pool. I would just generally avoid it altogether. As the gaming industry progresses, the need for more VRAM increases. And today that is true, unlike never before. There was a time when we were going from two to three to four gigabytes of VRAM, but now we've just made a big jump from four to eight and beyond in the future. I would highly recommend anyone with a card that has two gigabytes of VRAM or less to skip SLI altogether. So those of you here who have a two gigabyte card or less, I'm sorry, this conversation is really not for you. I would recommend that you sell your card and buy a new one secondhand or a new one altogether. So I hear like Radeon 7950s and 7970s pair up real well together, bro, because they're flexible and cross-generational and shit. What do you think of that? Okay, well that gentleman brings up a very interesting card. The Radeon 7950 and its 7970 bigger cousin had three gigabyte VRAM pools, which is still sort of fine for today's gaming purposes, all the way up to like high and even some ultra settings on modern games. If the GTX 970 and its three and a half gigabytes of VRAM can get by, then cross-firing those bad boys is a pretty good idea. And considering that they're cheap, and that they're AMD cards, and that Crossfire is much more flexible in terms of its pairing options, the Radeon 7950 and 7970 are potentially good options. So we'll put that one into the potential yes column, and we'll examine that in greater detail later. So anybody else? Any other cards you're curious about? Hey, what about a Titan Black? That's got a lot of GPU horsepower and whatnot. Uh, it seems to be pretty viable to me. You can't. Well, that belligerent gentleman made a very interesting point. What if you're one of these people who spent an absurd amount of money on a Titan or a Titan Black back in the day? It's got a lot of VRAM, lots of flexibility for the future in that regard, a lot of SLI potential as a result, but of course the card is considerably more expensive even on the secondhand market today. What are his options? Okay, so we'll examine that one. That's a more interesting question, so we'll put that one into the yes column. Definitely something that is at least worth exploring. Uh, anyone else got anything they want to cover? What about the GTX 980? These Goombas still want like 400 fucking dollars for the thing. Okay, so uh, that lady uh, obviously has something more recent. She has a last gen card, a GTX 980. That had been a dead card for quite some time. There are lots of them on the market and there have been for quite some time. Uh, is that worth exploring? Uh, okay, we'll throw that one into the list too. Anybody else got any other cards they have questions about in particular? Uh, uh, I got an R7 370 in the Cyber Power PC pre-built. Uh, I know, it's a stupid purchase at the time, but it's got four gigabytes. You think I could reuse that and pair it up with another one? Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, so what about lower end cards that have absurdly large VRAM amounts, like the R7 370 that came out with four gigabytes, or the four gigabyte GTX 960? I guess that's something we should definitely explore as well. Any other thoughts? Anyone else wanna throw something else at me that you think I should cover in this video? You there with the incredibly large breasts, sir. What about you? 
I would really like to get a second R9 390, but I find it objectionable that they draw so much power. Okay, so he's obviously concerned about cards like the R9 290 and 290X, although they do make great crossfire candidates for obvious reasons. They're very powerful cards. They even come in 8GB varieties, and they will crossfire with 390s and 390Xs as well, so there's lots of flexibility. The one caveat with cards like that is that they are power hungry as fuck, and if you don't have a power supply that's capable of supporting that kind of setup, and there's no point in getting a second card. And it adds additional cost to the equation if you have to buy a new power supply. So that's definitely something we should also take a look at. Anyway, I think we've fielded enough questions for today, so y'all get the fuck out of my house. I've got more video to film. Thanks. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's walk through this chart really quickly. Along the top, you've got your existing graphics card and the secondhand buy price if you were to double up and go with a Crossfire and SLI setup. Down here you've got the sale price should you want to take your existing card and ditch it on the secondary market. And of course here we have the Crossfire and SLI power draw for just the cards alone. Uh, this is DC draw from the unit. Second set of numbers down here, we have what I would consider to be the best reasonable single card alternative. In the case of the 1080s, this is brand new pricing here in Canada. And uh, these are the used prices of the alternatives listed up here, followed by the power draw numbers for each of these solutions. Down here in the third set of numbers, we have a simple plus minus equation. And the two of these potential solutions are weighted against one another with the cheaper option highlighted in green. Seems pretty straightforward. There's a lot of course that this chart cannot account for and I'm going to discuss those in great length beginning now. First and foremost, one thing that you cannot account for is SLI and Crossfire compatibility. So while these numbers might look favorable in some cases for the Crossfire and SLI options, and in some cases they genuinely are, you must understand that anywhere from 20 to 40% of games depending on how and when you measure, will not support SLI and Crossfire, or at the very least will be problematic or will not scale accordingly. If you think the situation is bad now, by the way, it's only going to get worse. AMD and NVIDIA have sort of either implied or explicitly stated that they're going to be moving away from anything greater than two-way SLI or Crossfire, and that is simply because A, the demand from the consumers is not there, and B, the support from the developers is not there as well. Reason being is quite simple. And I know this is going to be controversial, especially if I say it the wrong way. So bear with me as I fumble over these words and try to get the idea out of my face without making an ass of myself. I'm not one of these people that believes there's a hard limit on frame rate in terms of perceivability. That is just not true. But what I will say is that as you improve in graphical fidelity, in frame rate, texture quality, and detail, more and more people are going to have more and more of a difficult time telling the difference. The greater percentage of a market base you satisfy, the less pressure there is to develop newer technology. This is just true. It's been true in every aspect of our lives, and it will continue to be true, especially in this case. We are reaching the limit as to how much pretty we can put on a flat screen monitor and have someone give a shit about how it looks compared to something else. We are getting there. We're not there yet, but the GTX 1080 and cards of the future are going to make it very easy and very affordable for the average person to have a high quality, unparalleled gaming experience when compared to previous generations. As a result, the need for multi-GPU setups is going to progressively fade, and that market share of people who do Crossfire and SLI is going to considerably shrink as time goes on. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. Present day, if you are the owner of one of these cards, which by the way I do believe to be the best candidates for Crossfire and SLI, is it worthwhile to double up or should you dump and rebuy? Well. Again, it's not just in the numbers. There are some obvious cases here that just should be apparent to you. You should never double up on a GTX 960 because if some asshole is willing to pay you $200 to take yours off your hands and you, for $225, can go out and get an R9 290X, you absolutely should. No brainer. And of course, on the flip side, there are cases where the opposite is indeed obviously true. For example, over here with your Titans, it's a very limited card, it might be difficult to find, but if you have the power budget to accommodate SLI Titans, you obviously should pursue it because it will save you more than 300 Canadian dollars to get GTX 1080 performance, roughly speaking. 
you will be quite happy by doubling these up, even if you consider the fact that only 60 to 80% of games actually support SLI, you should still be good to go. But when it comes to the setups that are plus minus 20%, or maybe even plus minus 30%, you have to understand that because SLI and Crossfire are so finicky by their very nature, it still might not be worth it even if the money makes sense. Anyway, I think we're done here. Let's throw it back to Desk Jeff for some post-game analysis. Okay, so long story short, you should know by now what makes a good Crossfire and SLI candidate, especially when the secondary market is considered. You want a large VRAM pool, you want good GPU horsepower for the money, and you want high availability. Simple as that. You should be able to evaluate for yourself from there. I can't necessarily go over every card, but I hope that you've got a good rough idea of what you want to do when approaching this particular problem. On the whole, let me say that personally speaking, I would never recommend anyone ever crossfire or SLI for any reason. Just my personal feelings. Like I said, the situation is bad and getting worse and it's just not worth the headache. There's just a lot of nonsense associated with it. Even if the game does run, you get all kinds of stuttering. You get micro stuttering, macro stuttering. It's like a fucking Tourette syndrome convention. Anyway, guys, I think that's a wrap for this particular video. I got a lot of things planned. It's a Friday and it's 8.30 and I finished filming. So if I can get this shit edited and uploaded by 10 p.m. So look at your clocks right now. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on Canada Day, the holiday. You know what? I'm gonna do some streaming. Catch me on Twitch. Follow me on Twitter at Ofa, and uh, maybe I'll see you in a couple hours.